What's up everyone? Today we're covering WordPress design tips for beginners here on The Journey. All right, I am brand spanking new to WordPress. Okay. Where do I start? I'm so overwhelmed. It is super overwhelming. And I think a lot of people do when they start to build their very first site is they just go gung ho and just start trying everything. And they go in without a plan. So my first tip for you is to really have a plan for your website, right? Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to visit your website, what are some things that you want them to do? For me, the most important thing is they need to find all of our fresh new content on the mm -hmm. homepage. So we have a lot of content coming out daily, whether it's interviews or news articles. So I want them to be able to find that and easily find the thing that's most relevant to them. Right, so just kind of go down the rabbit hole of all your content, mm -hmm. getting the freshest first, yep. and then possibly find, oh cool, here's a related article, and then yep. here's another yep. article. So that's super important. You yeah. have a plan for your visitors. So same thing with you. When you want someone to visit your site, is it just to get information about you? Is it to call you? Is it to contact you? Is it to buy your product? Whatever it is, you want to have an idea of what that is going forward. So that way, when you develop your website, like that is priority number one with whether, whether you're designing the site or you have someone designing it for you. Okay, so I have a home page, but other than that, what other pages are important to have? So homepage, definitely important. If you don't have a homepage, you don't really have a website. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of important. But other than that, you want an about us page. You want to talk about yourself and yep. really talk about how you help the, the visitor, the consumer, the customer, right? Mm -hmm. The about us usually in typical fashion, like here's the company's history. Yeah. But a lot of people may not care about that. With your about page, have it really about how you help them, a little bit of your history, but more important, how you help them. Have a products and services page to really showcase what you do. Mm -hmm. Have a contact page because that's super important for people yep. to contact you. And then yep. lastly, a testimonials page. People love that social proof. You can pull reviews from like Yelp, Google My Business, Facebook, wherever you've gotten a review, plug it on the website and really show people that you are who you say you are. Yeah. And with those pages, people are either finding you through social or just going to Google and finding you that way. And so these are the pages that they want to do when they're doing their due diligence. They want to know who you are, why you're an expert, yeah. what other people say about you, what products and services you offer. So yeah, having those main ones are perfect. All right, so now another thing to really keep in mind with designing your website is you want to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Now, what I see a lot of first time people do is they'll go in and they have like paragraphs and paragraphs of their content. Yeah, they so want they to have just, everything there. Literally yeah. everything. So they throw everything on their website and it's just a giant block of text that's super hard to read. Yeah. And I know us millennials don't really like to read, we like <laughs> to skim. So it's really type, tough to, to understand where to go. Don't be afraid of that white space, that negative space that basically has nothing. It mm -hmm. helps people just, just see better. It helps our eyes breathe mm -hmm. and relax because we're not straining, Yeah. right? What yeah. are what's some other things to really keep in mind with the website? I think once you start putting ads on your site, if you limit the number of ads, obviously you want to monetize your website, right. but if it's just bombarding you with ads, it's a really poor user experience. I know that I'll find a recipe on Pinterest, I'll click on it and it just, bombarded with ad, 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 where I just say, it's forget it. I don't I don't want to make this casserole anymore and I'm done. Yeah, yeah. The, those clickbait type articles, yeah. right? You're on, on social media, you click on it, then it gives you like a paragraph and go on a page two and there's yeah. a bunch of ads and it's like 17 pages for what could have been like half a page. Yeah, going back to the purpose of your website, the reason you have a website is because you're hoping to turn these users into clients or paid customers. Right. So if you have too many conflicting messages, they're just gonna go away and you're, lose, you're leaving customers, sending them away because you have too much going on. Absolutely, and I, I think the, as a, a beginner designer or whatever you're doing, I would shy away from using ads in the first place until you're established, right? Like you said, it's about the user experience. And if the first thing they see is just a bunch of ads, they're not gonna trust you yeah. and they're not loyal to you yet to understand like, okay, cool, they have ads. I already love their content, love yeah. them. Let me help them out maybe I'll, I'll look at these ads. But if you're not there yet, shy away from them. And now with the website too, you also don't wanna have like just super random conflicting colors. Mm -hmm. it, it, it stresses out the eyes, like a, a yellow text on white background just doesn't work. You really wanna to stick to kind of your brand colors. There's a lot of cool little like complimentary color wheel calculators out there mm -hmm. online. Just do a quick Google search and it'll show you cool, plug in your, your primary color and it'll give you some complimentary colors that look good. Mm -hmm. That it's not gonna to be too overwhelming for the end user on your site because if you frustrate them and stress out their eyes, yeah. they're never coming back. 
Now, I know with your website, you have a ton of content, so lots of experience there. What are some best practices when it comes to content with designing your website? First off, you want content that is relevant to you and your business and your audience. If you are a dog groomer and you are writing about plumbing, then people coming to your website are not going to find that helpful and they're gonna go away. So make sure that whatever your audience is coming to you for, you're writing content that you like. And you can use Google Analytics or just ask your audience what they wanna hear from you. And mm -hmm. you can start writing more content about that so it's more in line with what they're looking for. But then also, you wanna make sure that it's consumable. You can't just have this giant block of text because you wanna put everything Skin, in there. I won't read it. <laughs> no one's going to read it. So it's as simple as trimming it down to the core message. But if that content is really important, then just hit that return bar and add some spaces so that way it's nice and easy on the eyes. Right, it's not an essay when you're in high school. You wanna break it up. Even if the paragraph is not in the perfect form, make it easy for the visitor to read, have nice, bulleted headlines or bullet points mm -hmm. or quote boxes, break up that content. Yeah, and make there... your English teacher mad, okay? Just make it nice and pretty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're gonna get some angry, angry emails. Uh -oh. <laughs> but with, with the website itself too, you really wanna think about the structure of the content as well, especially on, on the, the main pages. Mm -hmm. like, the blog posts and things like that definitely have to have structure, but so does your, like, say your homepage. Yeah. Now you don't want that block of text in your hero. So the hero of a website is basically that, that first little banner header area yep. that you see it usually has some type of, of text saying, here's how I help you, mm -hmm. a call to action and a nice image in the background usually. And then images with your website, they have to match your brand. Right. You can't just right. throw out if you're a dog groomer some plumbing stuff because yeah. that doesn't make sense. It's weird. And what about corny photos? like corny stock photos? I mean, if you don't have any photos, I would say that corny photos are maybe better than a blurry photo from your phone. It's true. But maybe it's time to invest in a photo shoot so you can get really nice, high quality content and images that really show and display what your brand and your products and services are. Absolutely. A professional photographer will definitely elevate you, especially if you're a brick and mortar, having someone coming to your place and take super quality photos, that way anyone can actually see it is great. Worth the investment. And now, if you have to use stock photos, mm -hmm. you don't always have to use the super corny ones. There are some free resources that I like to use when I'm designing websites for clients. So pexels.com is probably my favorite one, and then unsplash.com is also a solid option. Basically, photographers are going on there and uploading some of their best work to get exposure, and they're giving away for free, which is mm -hmm. super awesome and helpful can donate to them if you really like their stuff, but it really elevates your website. So it has some beautiful imagery, especially when it's on brand. Yep. Okay, this is awesome. But what else do I need for my website? Right, so with your website, you really want that, that purpose of it, right? And we talked about what is the goal of the website. Part of that goal is having a call to action and not just one call to action up in the hero. You want multiple call to actions throughout. So a call to action is a usually a button or a link of some sort that says, learn more, get now, buy this product. Subscribe to my email list. Yes, yeah. something basically telling a user to take action. So again, you wanna have it in the hero image, but you also wanna have it throughout the website itself. At the end of the blog post, mm -hmm. I really like to have it up at the top of the navigation bar in the upper right, just because of the way that people's eyes kind of travel around the website. It's usually in a Z formation, so they'll start at the top left, which is usually your logo. They'll move over and have the navigation, but then have a call to action right there and then they'll kind of scroll down, they'll see other content and to the right, they'll kind of finish off. And especially if that, that menu bar kind of mm -hmm. scrolls down, that call to action is always there for them to see and use and take that action. Nice, Neely pro tip guys, take notes. All right, so now another aspect of your website when designing is truly really have some sort of social share, if you could say that five times fast. Social share, social share, social share, social share, social share, whoa, got it. That, that, I'm, I'm impressed. She's kind of the best. So now with the social <laughs> share, I know what you're thinking, right? Like that's not design, but design is every single part of your website. You really need to be designing with purpose. So how is social share, I can only say it one time fast, <laughs> Uh, how has that really changed your website? Well, for our website, we want people to, we do a lot of blog posts, news articles, we wanna share our interviews. And so having those buttons at the end of every article is crucial because we will have articles that will go viral. And that's really the goal if you're writing content that is a blog post or whatnot, you want as many people to see it as possible. So right. having that option that at the end of the article, they can just click and share it to their favorite, favorite social network 
is key. If you don't have it, you're missing out on potential new viewers and new users who can find you and your business and your content. With social shares, it could be on like the left sidebar of like your blog page. You can have it in the widget area on your right sidebar. You can have it at the bottom of a blog post. Usually people have it in either the header or the footer. The more places you can add it to your website without it being overwhelming, the better. You wanna make this as easy as possible for someone to really love your content and wanna share it with the world. Mm -hmm. Now, another aspect that you really wanna keep in mind, and a lot of, again, a lot of people don't think of this as designing the website, is planning for SEO. SEO is all about the website design mm -hmm. and what you put into it. What are some things to keep in mind when really designing for SEO? Yeah, so you have this website, you want it to be found, and there are certain things that you have to do when building and designing your website, so that way Google and other search engines can actually find and read your website. Right. So the first one is your source code. There are certain ways that you need to structure your website, so that way the crawlers can find it. An example are the image alt tags. Google is not a human. It doesn't really know what your images are about. It's a robot, right? Yep. And so you have to go in and put text to describe, hey, this is a picture of a dog being groomed. So that way Google knows that this picture, this website is relevant for those search terms. So again, one of the, this all goes around, you have to structure your website in a way that Google wants, but then also your content, you have to have your keywords in there that's relevant to you and your business. So where you're located, yes. what your products and services are, your business name, make sure all of that is found in the content of your website because that all helps with your SEO. And if you want an even more of a deep dive about SEO, click this video right here and we can go into it even more. Now, super important when designing your website is to make sure that it is mobile friendly. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a mobile phone. Gone are the days, the early 2000s when literally everyone's on a desktop. Yeah, now we, not only does everyone have a mobile phone or a tablet that they're using to look at your website, but mm. all the different phones have different dimensions. Yes. So all the screens are different sizes and it, there's just a lot. So having a mobile responsive site solves for that. And most WordPress themes have some sort of responsiveness that'll make it look good no matter what device you're using. Almost all website builders do as well. So you wanna make sure that you keep that in mind because over half of searches on search engines are coming through mobile. And if your site is not mobile optimized, you make me Zoom, oh, I am worst. never coming to your website or doing business with you ever. And lastly, you wanna make sure it works no matter what browser people mm -hmm. are on. I know some browsers have some funky different settings, mm -hmm. right? So what might look good in Chrome may not look good in Internet Explorer if you're still using Internet Explorer. Edge. Edge, Edge now. Or if you're using Internet Explorer, upgrade to Edge. <laughs> Uh, Firefox, make sure just test it out. Just download the, the browsers really quick, go to the website, go to different pages. You wanna QA these things to make sure that uh, you're not putting someone else's experience down because they happen to have a favorite browser. Mm -hmm. So these are all really great tips, but where do I go mm -hmm. to find what's new and modern and to see what other people in my industry are doing with their websites? Do you have any tips or ideas? Yeah, I have lots of suggestions here. I know designing website, especially when it's not your forte or something you do every day, it's hard to really get that design, those design juices flowing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's good to see just inspiration, check out other websites. Now you can go online and just start searching random websites if you want, but I have two recommendations that these, that these sites really just highlight mm -hmm. the kind of the best of the best. The first one is awards.com and the second one is behance.com. Now both have all sorts of just graphical design type aspects, but they do have website just examples and basically sites of the day that you can kind of check out and start picking apart like, cool, I really love this feature. I really like how this looks and mold it into your own site. Kind of take the best uh, of everything and make it your own. All right, Neely, thank you so much. Those were fantastic tips on how to get started with WordPress. I think if you follow those, you're gonna have a killer website. Yeah, absolutely. And you helped out a lot, which helped me so I don't have to come up with as much content. But let us know your favorite tip in the comments below. And while you're there, smash that like button and subscribe to this channel so you get all these episodes first. This is The Journey. We'll see you next time.